Yeah, so uh, me and Tobias built a really cool SPFX web part that we're going to take a look at. Really, it's an extension, but that doesn't really matter in this case. Um, yeah, so uh, first, a little bit about myself. My name is Dan. I'm a uh, Microsoft 365 consultant based out of Denmark. Uh, I am lucky enough to have been awarded Microsoft MVP as of January this year. Uh, so uh, finally getting to show that blue batch somewhere. Um, yeah, and uh, as for my... Uh, my partner in crime here, Tobias. Uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Thank you, Dan. My name is Tobias Mastrini. I'm uh, I'm working as a I'm working as a Microsoft 365 consultant in Switzerland at the in a Swiss uh, in a Swiss uh, company called Adesso, which is a uh, part of which is part of Adesso Group, which employs a bunch of people in whole Europe and abroad. So back to you, Dan. Yeah. Well. Uh, I mean, uh, we have a sh short agenda or agenda of what we're going to go through. Um, uh, if I should, uh, should just quickly go over it, the first things we're going to talk about is the why we build it. Um, then we're going to have, of course, a demo. And then we're going to look at some code. And then we're going to round it all out with a nice summary of what we've been through. So over to you, Tobias. Yeah, let's first talk about the why we have built this extension. We are all familiar with the standard version history in SharePoint Online. This allows you to view, users to view, restore, or delete previous versions of files and items in a list or library, as you as you want to 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 to, to say. When a file or an item is changed, a new version is automatically created so that users can track the changes and revert to previous versions if required. One challenge is the restriction on the number of versions recorded. In addition, all the versions may be automatically deleted to save storage space. Um, unfortunately, uh, there is there is nothing you can do about this, not even us, even if we have the idea of developing a new fancy SharePoint extension. So what uh, we or I always uh, keep stumbling over is not only the fact that the the built-in version overview is still classic looking SharePoint UI, which means kind of looking outdated in certain parts. And look at Dan's quote or on, on top Dan is right, classic SharePoint should have should have been gone before even he was born. So the point is <laughs> when when many users work on a file and make frequent changes, the version history can quickly become confusing. And it can be very difficult to find and restore the desired version, which often brings users into a situation in which they don't feel that comfortable. At least my clients often told me so. And Dan, please, please go on on slide deck. When searching for a particular version, of a file or item. And do you also often encounter these questions? For example, which version contains my changes or the, or the changes of, 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 of X or you know, someone else? Or who changed it generally and when? And which metadata did change beside the standard metadata from version to version? And which version was the one that was rejected or approved by by my by my colleague. I always have to go through this long list of editors and document sizes that the built in version history on the left hand side here offers filtering editors and change dates and compare file metadata from different versions. So what we wanted to provide. On the right hand side was an easy to understand user interface by enhancing the built-in experience. For example, by decreasing the loading time of the history window. And, and uh, that's why I I'm, I'm, uh, start smiling again, because as the built-in version history experience is based, on, based on, uh, on the classic user interface of SharePoint Online, it simply takes a little longer to load, like many other things in classic mode, at least how I often experienced it. Um, we also wanted to provide some, um, some uh, um, enhancements in showing the basic metadata of, of a file or of an item, or 
by providing capabilities for filtering and version comparison, or simply integrating the modern look of SharePoint Online. And this is exactly where our extension comes in and offers five useful features. Time for demo then. All right, so let's take a look. Uh, let me know if you can actually see my screen here if I'm only sharing a window. Yeah, we do. Awesome. Once, thank you. Once deployed tenant wide, the extension and its features is always avail or is available in every document library or in every custom SharePoint list. Like every extension, it also could be deployed on a site level, but let's talk uh, about tenant level deployment. The extension also doesn't care of user permissions. It integrates completely into standard SharePoint behavior and is visible to every SharePoint user. This also means that the displayed data, which Dan shows up right now, is completely security trimmed and therefore processed by SharePoint. Now to the features. In addition to this awesome looking modern UI that uses the React timeline component, or React vertical timeline component, it offers filtering by editor. Just just show us how it how it works. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, so <laughs> it's not going to do too much since this is a, a my own yeah, but, tenant and there's only one user, but but we could hypothetically filter by the the editor of here. Um, I don't know if this item has any. So, so yeah, as you can see, I get pretty lonely on my own tenant. Uh, but, but we do have the option up here to to filter by the editor. Yeah, and it, this is pretty neat when different authors worked on the same document, and I want to filter out all the changes that belong to my working body X or to to my uh, that these that, that are my changes. And there is also. by entering a start date or an end date um, which which filters out all the versions that that were processed um between in, or during this this period and this works as beautiful as apple's time machine because because it it it, it allows a, a, a kind of time warping you know yeah as you can see it's very easy. Daytime selections or selection allows to set a start and end date. And yeah, just um, preview a specific version before restoring it. Um, by scrolling down and up, um, see the full versions of the document on a given date by by uh, by clicking on view version. And SharePoint standard behavior normally tells the browser to open the specific, the specific version of the file in a blank target and um, in kind of uh, document libraries or, or um, yeah, in, in terms of document libraries, this always results in a download of a file to your local machine instead of instead of showing it in in a new tab. Unfortunately, we haven't changed this behavior from for some reasons. And there are also two more options to restore or delete a specific version. Uh, all included in this actions drop down and this actions drop down menu here is more intuitive approach compared to the built in experience where the actions are hidden behind a modification date, which is formatted as a hyperlink. So. I would say, yeah, just, just show it up, just bring it up. So, so this is what the classic one looks like. Yeah. Um, and you have to know that you have to click out here and you can't like, yeah. click on the actual text because then you'll be redirected to, to just an embedded version of the classic list item page. I mean, this is, this is okay, but, but um, our version is, is more, I, I would say it's more intuitive um, that the, yeah, by clicking into this actions drop down menu, um, which which offers all those um, different different uh, actions, document uh, or, or version actions. Um, if you would would uh, switch back to to our extension, then thank you. Um, what I really what I really like is the comparison mode um, to compare any 
two or more document versions together by displaying the metadata that has changed from version to version. If you select two or more versions, the corresponding files and their metadata are displayed side by side, and this makes them directly compar comparable. And the, the comparison options are not limited to two or more consecutive versions. Simply select the desired versions to display and you're good to go. Yes, this is one of those things that keeps coming up with at least my customers where they will go, hey, what has changed since version one and version five or version five and version 13? And you can go ahead and you can actually compare those two mm -hmm. and it will show you all the changes that have been made in between. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, you're right. And and last but not least, it's the approval overview. Um, just Just keep track of who has approved or rejected the corresponding version and when the approver did so. The commands on the approver's decision are also displayed if they are so they have been submitted. And the built-in version history does not provide a comparable overview of all existing versions and the according approval uh, commands. And, and we have changed this from scratch. Awesome. Yeah, so that was a little bit of the demo. Um, we're a little bit short on time, so we will just quickly jump yeah. to the code um, and jump take a the quick code. look on, at some of the things in here. Um, so the first one I wanted to point out is that using a little bit of uh, Chris Kent's magic website uh, FL icons, for those of you who don't know that, we were able to download the, uh, the icons that we used for if you choose to deploy this as a command bar extension. Uh, and then we can actually dynamically change the color of that. Uh, meaning that whenever you deploy a com extension as a command bar extension, you can match the color of that. That is also supported in this sample. Um, the next thing is we have the issue of, hey, we're deploying this as a context menu command bar or a context menu extension. Why don't we use emojis to make it more visible? Uh, turns out SharePoint doesn't care that you use emojis, but it actually brings it really in front of the user. Um, and it is something I've started doing in production environments because this is way easier for the user to spot than version history. Um, yeah, so that was just a little tip for anyone building these kinds of extensions. Uh, you can you can bring your things forward. Um, then I wanted to point out that we are using uh, PNP.js, uh, obviously, since it makes a lot of things way easier for us. Uh, they have wrapped the entire versions API for us, so we're just calling it and like getting the data we need right away. Uh, from there, it's just a matter of us looping over each single field um, that is in every version because the version API returns full objects for every version. So we need to identify by ourselves what has changed, what has not changed since the last version. Um, so we will take a look at that. Uh, we used an enum to like identify which kind of fields we are, loop through them, field name, uh, internal name, new value, old value. These are all the properties that we're going to be using later on to display them, display them in the front end. Um, as you can see here, we are tracking a version by tracking what has changed, what is the version name. Uh, I saw somebody asking if um, we could do it with um, minor versions. That should work just as well, because um, that will just be a different version name. Um, then we implemented a React hook uh, to, to get these versions. Um, that we called use versions, uh, making it really easy that you just kind of feed it like some information about where you are, what is the context, and then there you go. Uh, it will automatically return all the versions of that given list item that's selected. Um, then we're getting to the rendering. Again, here we're using that same enum, uh, rendering out dependent on which kind of users it is. Um, and behind the scenes, we're using some of the reusable controls that were mentioned earlier to make it such that there's a person card whenever you hover over a person. Uh, unfortunately, that seems to be a little bit buggy right now. I saw some comments mentioning it shows up behind uh, the dialogue. That is correct. Uh, that is one of those things where it worked last time I touched it, and now it doesn't. Uh, so that's interesting and something we will need to look at. Then. The moderation status, uh, Tobias mentioned it here. I'm just bringing it in just so you can see there is the approval status is being mapped out 
uh, so you don't actually know, uh, or so you know if the document was approved or not. We didn't have approvals turned on in the demo we did, but if they were turned on, you would see colored labels matching whether or not it was actually approved. Um, and then the one last thing. Uh, we have the delete version and restore version here. And what we found is PNP.js has beautifully wrapped the delete version. Unfortunately, there is no public API to restore a version. Uh, so we considered two routes. We could either go ahead and we could um, just copy over all the values and thereby recreate the version. Or we could do the, uh, the naughty thing and look at what happens whenever we click restore version um, in the UI. So that's the route we went with. Um, and we looked at what is happening. And essentially, we're building a URL here and then posting to that URL because that is what the UI does. Um, that way, we're sure we're getting the same experience should something change, unless the, the API changes underneath. Um, in which case, I guess that's why you don't ever want to, uh, to like reverse engineer APIs because uh, things might break. So be aware of that if you do decide to deploy this extension in your environment. All right, um, and quickly jumping through. So to summarize, um, building apps on top of uh, M365 is always fun, and it's really easy to get going. Uh, SPFX makes the whole thing a breeze. There are some APIs that are not always there. Um, another one that I keep bringing up, I know you know this, Vesa, but I'll keep saying it, is the uh, SharePoint News API. Um, and then lastly, uh, building things together is just great fun. Uh, I hadn't worked with Tobias before, just we chatted a little bit on X uh, throughout the, the years. Uh, it was a great experience and uh, lots of fun working uh, remotely async. Um, yeah, I don't know if you have anything more to add, Tobias. Otherwise, I will go to the final slide and just say a huge thank you, everyone. Um, it's been a pleasure presenting for you.